Um, so uh, next, uh, we have Colonel James Manny, uh, the Director of Public Safety from the Rhode Island State Police here. Uh, Colonel, welcome. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and members of the uh, Finance and Judiciary Committees. Thank you. I'm here tonight as the Superintendent of the Rhode Island State Police and as the Director of Public Safety for the State of Rhode Island, and I represent uh, Governor Raimondo's administration. I'm here to uh, support the adult use bill, and I will go over some bullet points uh, fairly quickly. I know we've been sitting here for quite a while, and I'll, I'll, I'll try and ex expedite this. Rhode Island is pursuing the strongest regulatory framework in the country for adult use cannabis. Our goal is to allow access to marijuana products while making sure we do everything possible to protect public health and safety. We will make Rhode Island the first adult use state in the country to limit product potency. No products higher than 50% THC will be available for adult use. This means edible products will meet the strictest limits for THC content so the adults don't use too much too fast. Any concentrate or extract which contains more than 50% THC, will only be available to eligible patients throughout the state's medical marijuana program, and the strictest regulations and control are key to ensuring public safety. This will also ensure that our law enforcement officials have the proper resources and training to identify impaired drivers and keep our roadways as safe as possible for Rhode Island families. Drivers refusing to be evaluated by drug recognition experts or refusing to take a roadside chemical test, which hopefully is available, readily available to law enforcement in the very near future, for marijuana, will face a mandatory six-month suspension of their license. There will be severe administrative and criminal penalties will be in place for those who distribute marijuana to minors. We will make Rhode Island the second state to prohibit homegrown marijuana. This policy will stifle the illicit market and help avoid out-of-state diversion seen in adult use states that allow home grow. This also brings more accountability to the medical program as the shift continues to more licensed commercial manufacturers and retailers. This bill will enable the state to use advanced point of sale tracking to enforce daily transaction limits, which helps identify and stop customers who engage in illegal smurfing and looping. These tools will stop diversion to the illicit market and help ensure products do not end up in the hands of minors. And also will fund prevention and education incentives. In conclusion, Rhode Island is already dealing in the public safety area with these issues. Massachusetts, to our north, very close border, um, already has legalized marijuana. And Connecticut is on track to do so as well. Now's the time to commit the resources through regulation and financial resources to protect public safety. We will work closely with the governor to ensure that the best public safety is available if this is adopted. Thank you. Colonel, thank you for your presentations. Any questions or comments? Senator De Palma. Very quickly, Colonel, thank you for being here and thank you for staying. I'm sure you had some other testimony on the uh, Yes, other, sir. Other side as well. Uh, Much. <laughs> uh, with regards to a basic question we asked other folks earlier from a public health perspective, if you didn't have to deal with this, wouldn't that be an advantage to you? That, and, and here's what I mean. If we're able to educate folks, everybody, there's nothing positive. Put the, put the medicinal side of pieces aside for a second. There are certain things, and I support that to the nth degree, because there are certain medications for certain folks that just don't do it, and medical cannabis does. Put that aside, the recreational piece now. If you never had to deal with it, so we're able to convince through education, maybe altruistically, but we've, done, we've seen the significant drop in the amount of uh, smoking, uh, cig cigarettes or whatever, over time. Wouldn't that be better use of our investments so that from a public safety perspective, there's still going to be a percentage, just like there's a percentage doing things that are inappropriate on a daily basis, wouldn't that be a better investment of time and resources to ensure that there is no use? So the negative side of negative public health benefits, negative public health impacts aren't there. 
That's a very good question and comment, Senator. And I would tend to agree if we lived in a very large, isolated state. But once again, we're Rhode Island. We're very small, and we're sandwiched between two states, one that's legalized it and one that is about to. We are going to deal with this issue no matter what. It's already there. So I think it would be prudent to support this and to uh, pass this bill. Thank you, Colonel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Did I see a hand over here? Senator Reptakis. Thank you, Senator. Senator, as you know, because you have done ride-alongs with us out of Hope Valley Barracks, that the problem exists not only with DUI, distracted driving is a tremendous problem right now as well. And then this would also add um, some element of uh, impaired driving, no, no question. When I sat with the governor, that was the first uh, question I had for her, and she recognized that right away. And she committed to the resources needed to um, to assist law enforcement, all public safety with this, throughout the state, not just the state police, but municipalities as, as well. And that was the key to it. We need the resources. But once again, I, I keep going back to this argument. We're already dealing with it, but we don't have the resources. Uh, we need resources. Is there something else that you need from the general assembly, whether it be financial, if you can identify, if you can identify that in the future, or stricter laws to make it a lot easier to prosecute uh, those that, that don't want to listen, don't want to obey the laws, get behind the wheel for using these products. I think that's twofold. I think uh, any time you can streamline any laws to assist law enforcement to uh, do this quicker, that would help. But I think, and that would be the long-term goal. The short-term goal would be financial, for sure. So with the state, um, we would need drug, right now we would need drug recognition experts, to, um, which is in sh short supply in Rhode Island and across the country. It's a very labor-intensive process to train DRE experts. The research is showing that we're on the cusp of a chemical test breakthrough for uh, marijuana, and that would greatly help uh, the state and across the United States. So once again, to summarize, short-term financial for the resources necessary and long-term streamlined laws to help us out. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Ashmo. Chairman Conley, uh, thank you. Uh, Colonel, it's the first time you testifying before the Judiciary Committee and, and the Finance Committee, so I want to welcome you. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Senator. And I have the greatest faith in your ability and skills as the Colonel to be able to uh, have the highest regard for public safety. And Senator Raptax's question sort of stole my thunder. I was going to uh, talk about the DREs and how you need more of them. And then for the first time tonight, earlier in the room, um, while you were testifying elsewhere, uh, it may have been Norm that talked about there being, I think it was Norm, talked about there being this new uh, oral chemical test that's out. So I guess that's what you're talking about, that an officer can do in the field 
to test an individual's uh, mouth to be able to determine if they're under the influence chemically of, uh, of cannabis and to what degree. Uh, so that certainly would be far more cost effective than having to go train more DREs. Um, but I personally know how short you are on DREs, prosecuting for a few towns, and there are, there's, when I read fact patterns and DUIs every once in a while, you know, one out of 20 or 30 will be a, maybe 40 or so will be a, a marijuana related offense and, and the DRE is just not there. You may, you know, you might have a trooper that's on vacation or I'm doing it for Lincoln and we've got to call in somebody from Johnston or, the, you know, so it's resources, time and resources. But I have the greatest faith in you and, uh, and anything we could do to help, of course. So thank you. Thank you, Senator. And I, and I do believe once we, once we can get a breakthrough in the chemical test, the same way there were breakthroughs on the DUI uh, chemical test, that that would help law enforcement immensely to, uh, uh, for public safety. Thanks, Senator. Senator Sosnowski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just really wanted to welcome the Colonel here. Thank you, and Senator. And appreciate your testimony. And Thank you. And so happy you're on the job. Thank, Thank you. you. Is that because you're from South Kingston? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Uh, Colonel, thank you for your testimony tonight. Thank you. I know you've had quite an air to testify. We appreciate your willingness to um, come before the, uh, these two joint committees uh, this evening and appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.